A warm greeting. Today is Thursday, March 7, 2024. This is the meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. Over the past weekend, we were discussing how the 2024 hurricane season may be more active than usual in the Atlantic region. Firstly, due to warm temperatures in the tropical Atlantic and the future development of the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific region. Additionally, we had the opportunity to analyze the most recent runs of the global model CANCIPS, which forecasted that the 2024 hurricane season could be quite active in the Atlantic region. Today, I decided to record this video to talk a bit about the changes already noticeable in the equatorial region of the Pacific, which is predicted, is an indication that the La Nina phenomenon should develop over the next few months and be present during the peak of the season. Furthermore, this week two very important runs of global models came out, including the European model and the ensemble of North American models. These also show that the hurricane season could be very active. Before analyzing the recent runs of the European model and the ensemble of North American model members, I wanted you to see in this animation how during this week, we are finally seeing colder temperatures than usual beginning to appear over the equator in the region 3.4 of the El Nino. In fact, it's very impressive that over the last seven days, temperatures have decreased by almost 3 degrees below normal. It is anticipated that over the next few weeks, this cold water will continue to spread across the equatorial region. Most likely, in one or two months, we will see the end of the El Niño phenomenon and transition to neutral ENSO conditions before the La Niña phenomenon develops, probably during the month of June or July. That is precisely what the global CFS model continues to forecast, where you can see that the latest runs continue to show the possibility that for the peak of the season, we may have moderate or strong La Niña conditions. This is definitely not good news regarding the hurricane season in the North Atlantic. We know that historically, the La Niña phenomenon creates favorable conditions for system formation. Additionally, I wanted you to see a comparison of hurricane trajectories during El Niño phenomena, where you can see that typically the most significant hurricanes form over the waters of the tropical Atlantic and in the eastern Caribbean region. And the vast majority of them take a northwestward trajectory away from the United States region, the Gulf of Mexico, and the western Caribbean region. Here you can see the trajectories of different tropical cyclones during years with strong El Niño conditions, as was the case last year. However, compare the difference in years when we have had the La Niña phenomenon, where we can notably observe that the Western Caribbean region and the Gulf of Mexico experience higher activity of tropical cyclones. Again, compare the trajectories of hurricanes during El Niño phenomena, where the Western Caribbean region and the Gulf of Mexico experience little cyclonic activity compared to years with La Niña, where the risk significantly increases for this area. It is not very encouraging to see that the projections continue to forecast the rapid development of La Niña. Additionally, warm temperatures are expected to persist over the tropical Atlantic region for the next few months. Now, let's analyze the latest run of the European model, which extends into the months of July, August, and September. You can see that La Niña is forecasted in the Pacific, and the North Atlantic will continue to have above normal ocean surface temperatures. However, the most concerning aspect, and something we haven't seen in recent years, is that the European model is forecasting barometric pressures well below normal precisely in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean region. This could pose a significant risk for cyclone formation in this area. As a consequence, the model also predicts higher than usual precipitation anomalies concentrated in the Caribbean Sea region. Additionally, note that the European model is forecasting the formation of 17 tropical storms in the Atlantic from May to September, when the normal count during this period is 12. The European model shows higher activity than usual, while in the eastern Pacific region, it predicts 15 storms when the normal count is 13. These numbers resemble those of a normal season for the eastern Pacific region. Similarly, in terms of hurricanes, it also depicts a highly active Atlantic. From June to September, it forecasts 9 hurricanes when the normal count is 6. For the eastern Pacific region, it predicts a normal hurricane season with between 6 to 7 hurricanes. In terms of accumulated cyclone energy, Note that it forecasts up to 70% more cyclonic activity than usual for the Atlantic. This would definitely represent one of the most active seasons in history. Meanwhile, for the eastern Pacific region, they may have a hurricane season close to normal. Remember that the European model tends to be quite conservative, so it is very alarming to see the projections from this latest run. It's so much so that since 1993, the European model had never forecasted such cyclonic activity in terms of accumulated cyclone energy. We are really talking about the most aggressive forecast in the last 30 years that the European model has shown us. You can see that over the past few years, the accuracy of these projections has been quite good. Also, note that during this period, and up to September, 
the European model is marking the area just east of the Caribbean and northeast of the Caribbean as the main zone of tropical cyclone presence. Also, the east coast of the United States and the northern Gulf of Mexico. This is quite concerning because it approaches land areas closely and is very different from what we had during the previous year, where most hurricanes had a northwest-north trajectory, moving mostly over Atlantic waters. It seems that this year, models are forecasting trajectories more favorably inclined towards the west, which could pose a serious threat to the east coast of the United States, the Gulf of Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. Lastly, I wanted you to see the projection from the latest run of the North American models, where for the months of August, September, and October, they are forecasting a strong La Nina event in the Pacific and the continuation of warmer than usual temperatures over the tropical Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. This is why during the March run, this model continues to forecast higher precipitation than usual in the tropical Atlantic, just east of the Caribbean, over the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. Although this is a projection of the possibility of above-normal precipitation anomalies, it can give us an idea of the possible trajectories that would be favored during this hurricane season. Unfortunately, we see that they could threaten several areas in North America. Well, that's all for this video. Remember that over the next few weeks, I will continue to record videos because several ENSO forecasts and runs from other global models will be released. I will be very attentive to this season, which unfortunately seems to be quite active and dangerous. Here at Hurricane Info, I will always be vigilant to keep you informed. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. So, until next time. I hope you have an excellent weekend.